Hey guys, today I'm doing another dollar store makeover. A part two because a lot of you guys really seem to like the first one. I walked around the dollar store for like an hour, just trying to figure out what I could customize and paint on. There's not a lot of good options. It wasn't easy the first time around, and it was even harder the second time Maybe. around. Eventually, I found some things that I thought might work. A coffee mug, some Hawaiian buckets, and a ninja mask. Unfortunately, I didn't run into any My Little Ponies this time either, so the search continues. Slaughtering plastic ponies will have to wait, but I think this is a pretty good dollar store haul to make over. So first I started off with the coffee mug. It's a pretty basic, boring looking thing. Personally, I like my cups to have a bit more personality and make me laugh when I look at them. This one's personality is pretty dull though. Hey, sparkle bug. I could have just painted on the mug, but I wanted my character to have bulging eyeballs sticking out, so I decided to use the mug as a base to sculpt on top of. I also wanted to add a mouth to the mug character out of epoxy. I figured it would be impossible to blend the epoxy into the mug. I wanted the texture of everything to match, so I decided to just cover the whole cup in a layer of epoxy. I don't plan on drinking out of this mug. It's really just for decor, so it's fine. It's fine, it's fine. I know I could have just made a mug out of tin foil or something, but it wouldn't have been as sturdy. And plus I already have a mug, so it's just easier to use this as a base. I tried to smooth everything with water as best as I could. I then took some epoxy to build a mouth. I wanted it to be like an open mouth, like he's screaming or shocked. I then added two bulging eyeballs sticking out. One of them is bigger than the other. He's got some messed up teeth. I feel like the imperfections make the characters more lovable, at least for me. I like my characters to look a bit deranged and silly. I didn't know what color to choose for him, so I just went with a light blue color for the mug. I touched up the eyeballs with some white paint just to clean it up a bit. I wanted the eyelid to stand out a bit, so I went in with a slightly darker blue. He has a grand total of six teeth, which is actually a little more than Honey has, so not bad, I'd say. He has one green eye and one colorless eye. I don't know. It adds to the cartoon aesthetic, also I just like it this way. Some of you guys have previously suggested adding glossy varnish to the eyeballs, which I have tried and I loved. I think it gives it that nice glassy eyed look. So I did that again for the eyes, and for the rest I just covered it in matte varnish. Afterwards I noticed there's something about mugs and mug characters that makes me lean towards the color light blue for whatever reason. He kinda looks like he could be Boo Boo's dad or something which wasn't intentional. I just briefly for a second forgot about Boo Boo. What do you think? He almost looks horrified of Boo Boo's relationship with Honey. He thinks Honey is too much of a scaredy cat. He's not a true ogre. Because of course, true ogres are fearless. I want to rip your eye out and eat it. Oh please, I need my eye. I need to eat your please. eyes. Please, somebody help me. I'm actually just going to kill you. If you're new here and you don't want Boo Boo to bite I your face off. I want to bite your face. Oh. You should consider selling your soul to me by subscribing to my channel and ringing that bell thing so you don't lose me on the internet. I post new videos every Friday. Next on the list are the Hawaiian buckets. There were some very miniature teeny tiny buckets the size of my thumb, like three for a dollar, which was nice but I thought they might be too hard to paint on. One because of their size, but two because they had ridges on them. These buckets on the other hand were bigger and had a flat surface. Some of them did have flowers on them, but I figured I could paint over that so I ended up going with these. They're like these metal buckets. I know the paint won't stick to them well, so I first have to cover them in Mod Podge. For these buckets, I thought it would be cool to paint some of my original characters on each of them, but I didn't want to paint the whole character on it. I wanted to more just stick their faces on it. I painted the first bucket a base layer of yellow. This one was the easiest to paint just because the bucket is a plain white. I guess this one didn't get invited to the luau. I'm going to be turning this bucket into the zombie astronaut bunny I made in my last squishy makeover. 
He's a pretty new character. A lot of you guys seem to like him, so I figured he could make a second appearance today. I sketched him out in pencil on the bucket. I really just included his face in the astronaut window, his ears flopping down, and his toxic waste symbol, which I accidentally drew upside down, so I had to redo Whoops. that. For those of you that notice things, you might notice that his exposed brain and carrot stab wound have been replaced with an actual bunny ear. This was from before the accident. Also, I just didn't know how to fit the brain and carrot wound onto this bucket without it looking weird and deformed. I mean, he still looks weird and deformed. Hey. I just didn't have space for the carrot, to be honest. I think the window is kinda uneven. It's pretty hard drawing on a cylindrical surface, just like it was when I was trying to draw on Starbucks cups. It's not the most convenient thing to paint on. Even though it is a little uneven, it doesn't really bother me that much. I think it's a look. It's... It's grown on me over time. I've come to terms with it. For the next bucket, I painted it a dark brown as a base color. For this one, I'm going to be painting the reverse centaur. She is infamous for her massive Ew. underbite and large derriere. That means butt, if you don't know. Unfortunately, her dump truck won't be making an appearance today. It's mostly just her face, so I hope you'll still be able to recognize her without her rotund bottom half. She does have big bulging eyes. I'm not sculpting on the buckets, so they won't be sticking out. I'm just drawing them on, 2D style. I colored the teeth in white, but I added some yellow between the teeth. They're meant to look slightly rotting. She hasn't gone to the dentist in a while, so it's all catching up to her. I added some drool and the top of her mane peeking down. Also went in with some flies just because I can. I don't really have a reason for them. She's supposed to look dim-witted, and I think she does, but looking at it top down, she looks more angry, like she's about to charge at you and trample you with her large derriere. But she's not meant to look like that. She's not really mean or mad. She's not really thinking anything, actually. I then went ahead and painted the third bucket green. I wanted this to be the tutu witch. <laughs> hey, sweetie. The Tutu Witch was originally created in my first LOL doll makeover about a year ago. After that, she's made a couple appearances, most notably in a Create This Book episode and a Paper Squishies episode. She's basically an old goblin witch with a pointy nose that wears a purple tutu and a witch hat and carries around a magic wand. Her main occupation is Fairy Godmother of the Dark Side. To summon her, you have to fart three times while spinning around in a circle. <laughs> Her pointy nose has caught the attention of many suitors, mainly because of the giant wart on it. Last time I drew her, I apparently forgot to draw the wart, and some of you guys pointed that out. So I guess the cat's out of the bag now. The wart's fake. She puts it on for added appeal, I guess, if you're into that. I didn't want to let you guys down, so I told her to wear it today. Her wand, witch hat, and tutu were not able to make the final cut today. Just like the other buckets, it's Ew. just her face. But at least the wart's there, so that's something. I didn't paint the insides of the buckets. I kind of liked the contrast, so I left them as is. I did varnish all the buckets with glossy varnish just to give them that more finished look and to prevent any of the paint from chipping off. The last thing I picked up at the dollar store was this ninja mask. There wasn't like a whole shelf of masks or anything. There was just this one random mask all by itself that I happened to stumble upon. It's not my size. It says three plus on the packaging and I'm three plus a few, but it really dug into my face, particularly around my nose and unibrow area, but I'm fine, I'm recovering. It actually lights up too. I figured it would be really cool to sculpt on top of it and turn it into one of my original characters. That was the thought process at least. I didn't really know who to turn it into, but I eventually settled on this sloth character that I actually made in my last dollar store makeover. I've had the idea for him floating around in my head for a while now. I imagine a lazy, like, grumpy kinda looking sloth that's just kinda hunched over and wears a black beanie and doesn't really care about much. Nothing really excites him in life. I've been wanting to draw him and bring his whole character to life, which I haven't had the chance to do yet, but I thought he would make a cool mask. I was wrong. Uh. This is the stuff of nightmares. Uh. 
I completely covered the mask in epoxy. I wanted it to look like the beanie is pulled right down above his eyes, so I added the band of the beanie. He has a big nose and of course his signature frown. First thing I did was paint his beanie black. It was kind of starting to look like a bank robber at this point. I may have made his teeth a little too long. I was trying to exaggerate them. I thought it would add to the whole mask kind of look. It's kind of hard to tell it's a sloth with the whole human face shape. I'll be honest, it doesn't look uh. like a sloth at all. Uh. Not even with the brown rings around his eyes. This wasn't really what I envisioned in my head. At least I can say it's scarier than the original ninja mask. I think it would give anyone a heart attack, so I'd say that's a win for the dark side. Also, the mask gained quite a few pounds after I added the epoxy to it, so it hurts even more to wear it. I'd say it's for decor, but let's be honest, this is too cursed to have laying around the house. This one's going in the vault, far away so I can forget about it. I'm pretty happy with the mug and the buckets. They look like my kind of aesthetic. The mask, not so much. You win some, you lose a lot. We'll just pretend the mask never happened. <laughs> what do you want, sweetie? I wish you would click on the top right or bottom left. <laughs> Anything you want, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> 